Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Oh. And you're on by, guys. It's all about being sensitive, having fun, and just really being yourself. It's the bye, guys. Yeah. The bye, guys. Yeah. The bye, guys. The bye, guys. Yeah. The bye, guys. Yeah. The bye, guys. Yeah. The bye, guys. Yeah. The bye, guys. Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Bye Guys with Zach and Ian. I'm feeling all right. It's a little hectic in here. How you feeling, Zach? I'm still catching up. I had a, I had a bad travel weekend. To be completely honest, Ian, we are pre-taping this. It's 6 o'clock at night. Alex just woke Alex had to come out and wake me up from a deep REM sleep yes. on the couch in the, in the lobby. You got fucked by Delta. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't think it was their fault. I think it was legitimately... All flights got grounded. Oh, yeah, no, like hundreds of flights got canceled this weekend. It was like a huge event. But they they wouldn't let any of you off the plane. We'll talk about... Let's introduce our guests. Okay, yes, yes. Introduce the guests for us, please. So we have some excellent guests today. Uh, uh, As usually, as usual, one of each. One one Zach brought, one Ian brought. Yes. To my left, uh, great Vegas comic. Really funny dude. Uh, did Skankfest last year. Going to be here this year, and then uh, just somebody that I've uh, been doing spots with whenever I'm in Vegas. Uh, Freddie Curry is here. What's up, man? How you doing, brother? Good, good. Thanks Thank for you having for being me, here, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah Freddie. Hey, thanks for coming in. Yeah. And uh, to my right is uh, one of my favorite people. I love running into him, and I think he's just so fucking funny. Uh, Dominic Leonelli. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You look like you would hang out with Donna's dad on that '70s show. Oh, I don't yeah, know how to explain. Way. Yeah, there's only one person. And Freddie would... looks like he would <laughs> fucking have Freddie Mac. <laughs> Danny <laughs> Masterson's back. <laughs> yeah. Hey, now my boy didn't do nothing. <laughs> what was the evidence? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since when did it become a crime to have your boys back? All right? Yeah. <laughs> Here's my thing. All right, Ashton and Mila pissed me off. They wrote a letter. To that backed him and was like, "Look, he's our guy, whatever." And then when it came to light that they did it, they were like, oh, "We don't condone this. We're, so we don't like him." That was a lawyer. Oh, so that was that cool. whole state. That second video they put out. That was definitely a lawyer wrote that. They they looked like robot. That looked like they did that by gunpoint. Oh, it looked like an ISIS terror video. <laughs> it looked like it yeah. It looked yeah. there should have been guys in ski masks <laughs> behind them with machetes. But it was like a woke ISIS terror. It yeah. was just some fat girl with blue hair that looked like Zach with a gun yeah. <laughs> behind the camera. Yeah, ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw a thing today. It was a girl on on my Facebook who's very political and shit, and she was posting. There was another. It was a list of all the other letters that were sent on uh, Danny Masterson's behalf. People don't know Danny Masterson was high on that '70s show, got charged with forcible rape, Mm -hmm. got 15 to 30 years. Yeah. So today, I guess the parents from that '70s shows both wrote letters. Mm Uh, Ethan Soupley wrote one. Whoa. And then it was a bunch of other people, and they put all the letters on this website. Isn't that illegal? And some of them were from, like, his parents, his brother. And when I read them, I'm like, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Let's be honest. Let's completely remove ourselves from the situation. I don't think we're even. He probably did it. <laughs> moved. We, I think we're already yeah, removed. I'm just saying. <laughs> Emotional, without a doubt, uh-huh. he's probably a really bad dude. Yeah. You know, evident, whatever fucking right. chances are, he did it. Yeah. If it was somebody that was like my boy that I've yeah. been working with for 20 years. Yeah. And he said to me, I didn't do it. Yeah. I'd write that letter. If Lewis got charged with murder, mm-hmm. I would write a letter to the judge about what a great dad he is. And like how much he does for his friends, dude. Like, yes, because I'm a fucking good friend. Yes, and I believe my friend. Yes, maybe to a fault. You know what's kind of funny? Lewis about just this? got charged with murder. <laughs> <laughs> and what what you were describing? I was like Zach. You were going to have to do this. Yeah, <laughs> I have I have a draft on like, my phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so something I love about this, someone pointed out that like they were trying to look like they're in the dingiest room possible of their house with this background, right? 
and uh, someone pointed out that this is the wall that they were at. This is their state, oh, and they were shit. sitting here for that apology. I just think it's hilarious. That's very That's funny. So funny. That is. Yeah. Yeah, oh my does. god! A butler's holding the boom mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I would write that letter for my boy if it was yes. like somebody I loved and cared about and worked with for a long you time. You can you can write a letter about someone's character and totally not uh, make a comment on the charge. Or what they're being accused of. And now, but is when, the Scientology angle a little weird? I don't, sure. I don't know the the whole thing with Scientology. I don't even know all the details. All I know, I haven't been following. All I know is Ashton and Mila wrote a letter that was like, uh, I I don't even know when the letters are written. Are they written after sentencing, or are they written prior to trial? They were when? written to. I believe it goes to the judge after he got charged. And maybe convicted, mm -hmm. the judge still has to do the sentencing. Right. The letters are for the judge to determine the sentence, as far right. as I know. So, like the letter, it's to give a more lenient sentence. Yeah. Uh, but the the Scientology thing is supposedly the Church of Scientology had goons threatening these chicks to shut the fuck up, uh, which is why this took so long. They dropped the ball. Yeah, <laughs> this, I lose faith in the Scientology church now. I'm just saying they. That's used to what get I'm shit saying, done. bro. You can't cover up shit, bro. I I fucking you know when has Scientology ever done anything bad until now? Yeah. Now right. I have no faith left in the world. Right. <laughs> like, they, they gave us Mission Impossible. Come yeah, on. they cover up uh, John Travolta's uh, anal. Gay. Yes, uh, I know. It's like. I don't want to be a Scientologist no more. Mm -hmm. I just expose think, my I think secrets. Danny Guess what? You biggest... just lost another. Freddie's yeah. gone. I'm out. Danny Masterson's biggest crime was that he just didn't do anything good enough in the last few years for them to care to cover it up. Oh, God. Yeah, he probably wasn't really bringing people in by being a beacon of yeah. Scientology. <laughs> oh, one of the yes. other letters was his brother, who was the older brother on Malcolm in the Middle. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, and there was another one that was really fucking funny. It was just all these like kids from like the late 90s, early right. 2000s. They probably just like smoked weed with them on set. <laughs> no, yeah. they were all like close, I think. Yeah. Well, I, Topher Grace did not like any of them. Yeah. He, so he's looking like the, yeah, the fucking he hero. I saw that post where somebody was like, people made fun of him for years yeah. for being the odd man out on that cast. Mm -hmm. Turns out. What's up with the brownie, the brown guy? Wilder Valderrama. <laughs> Didn't he... What the fuck is... Is he staying out of it, too? His only crime was not marrying Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. Right? That was a great... Uh, they did the roast of Cheech and Chong on TBS. Uh-huh. And uh, one of the jokes Gerald did is, Wildem Val 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 Valderrama is so gay, he fucked Lindsay Lohan and made her gay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you write in a letter? I didn't read the letters. I don't know if you guys... It's got just this. a lot of, like, character stuff. Well, this yeah, but... but my milkshake once. He's aren't, a nice guy. <laughs> aren't you supposed... Aren't those supposed to be sealed? How is this public knowledge? Yeah, and maybe that. it's court records, and they're unsealed at the end of the trial. I don't know. I seen the picture of Danny Masterson that they painted... And he's biting his nails. It's like, bro. oh no, he's blowing his wife a kiss, and it looks uh. like he's like Doctor Evil. <laughs> Pop that picture up. He's literally like this. It looks like he's like, hey. Uh. Here's the thing. Why did Ashen and me? I guess they got public pressure to make that apology video, but it's like, <laughs> dude, you, you, what? What if Ashton Why are you turning your? Well, don't turn your fucking yeah. back on you. You wrote the letter. You're he being punked. Condone the action, but. <laughs> Support what you did. Be, look, I've known this guy 20 years. He's well, gonna, I'm not going to not write a letter. They went after him, and they resurfaced those videos of him on... Uh, yeah, look. He's oh, like, yeah. oops. <laughs> what am I charging? <laughs> yeah. Did I That's do that? Guilty. If I have to paint guilty, <laughs> it's that. That is the worst courtroom sketch ever. Do you guys see the How long are you posing it for? Does, it really does look like he's going, ooh, contu <laughs> contusions around the Volvo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you what do we have any of those character letters? They're it, long. A lot of the one I read, I read Ethan Supley's, and it was more about like him teaching him how to be a professional and like mm -hmm. kind of like being his friend for years and mm -hmm. how he's always been respectful to everyone and mm -hmm. this is very out of his character. Yeah. And he doesn't know this. He doesn't know him to ever do anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course I never had a pussy either, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen that video of Ashton Kutch Kutcher, Kutcher uh, talking about his wife, future wife, Mila Kunis, sitting on her his lap when she's a minor and shit? Oh, on it's on the Rosie O'Donnell show, right? Uh, yeah, it's a clip. It's yeah, yeah it resurfaced. This, yeah, he was like, Danny bet me $20. I wouldn't give you tongue. And she was like, I was 14. He's like, Ooh. yeah, but it was the first kid. Oh, it's like, bro. Uh, 
<laughs> I see. That fucked me up because I'm it like, did. wait, fuck me up. Why'd they make him kiss her when she was 14? Okay. Right. Once again, I hate that I'm always this guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> she did lie about her age when she got on the show. She was 14. Really? Uh -huh. She was 14 and she lied and I think said she was 16. Oh, oh wow. She, she is 14 on the I first I think she season. said she was 17. Oh, I believe. It? I've heard this. Dude, too. Alex is a down ass bitch. <laughs> Alex goes, No, I actually said she was 17. I want I wish I had Alex with me all the time <laughs> to be like, hey, female point of reason, real quick. Yeah. She said she was 17. Oh shit. Hola, la esta gustando mi podcast. That means are you liking my podcast? And I've been learning to speak Spanish with our new friends at Babbel. And with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in just three weeks. The best way to learn a language is through immersion, living where language is spoken natively and using it every day. But that's not really possible for everyone. So what's the second best way to learn a language? Babbel, because with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in just three weeks. So instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with a language app that's a little more than just a fun game, Babbel has quick 10-minute lessons that are designed by over 150 language experts to help you sp start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. So check it out today, guys. I think you're absolutely going to love it. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel might be one of the best ways to learn a new language. So here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners Go to babbel.com, that's B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash guys, and you're going to get 55% off. One more time, guys, that's B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash guys for 55% off. Rules and restrictions may apply. Check it out. I see the one thing on TikTok with Conan, I think it's Conan, being like, they're going to bust you <laughs> with Danny. Did you see oh, that? Oh, that's right. That's yeah. huge. Yeah, yeah, da because I... Uh, he said uh, his friend imitates him, and he's like, my name's Danny Masterson. Let me show you my balls. And he's like, are you doing that? And he goes, well, you got balls. You got to use them. <laughs> now, yeah, what it's, if... It's, it's huh. an unfortunate sitch, man. And, I, of course, you immediately you have to go to these poor women. But I don't know, man. They warned us with face off. Danny Masterson's <laughs> first role was a rapist. I didn't even know he was in that. He really? The He's the guy that tries to rape John Travolta's daughter and he gives her the um oh, the shit. butterfly knife and yeah. she stabs him in the leg. You don't even oh. need to audition for this one, Danny. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm just saying John Travolta kind of gave him to us, which makes me think there's some cabal. Wow. Oh. Mm. Now, what if Danny looked like Matt Reif or like somebody? Do you think the case would have went differently? No, I think he's a pretty good looking. I mean, he was on a major network show. He's a good looking enough dude. Sideburns are gross. Yeah, dude, yeah, but he was playing sideburns. a '70s he guy. Had weird teeth. Look at that Franco guy. He's, he's good looking though. He got fucking canceled. Who James Franco? Yeah. Damn, I didn't even know he got. I'm still checking him out. Dude ain't enough. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. He got canceled for some. Uh, he got canceled because he was had an acting, acting class. Acting class. Yeah. And I think he would uh, do love scenes with his students. <laughs> and I believe he did an unsimulated or as the unblocked oral sex scene. Why? It's all. And I think you're acting. supposed to put, you like know, a dental dam. Yeah, you know, something. like a fruit roll up down or something. Like teaching them, huh? Or something. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, yeah like, it's like a Mel Whoa. comic going right. What writing scene? With a what monologue was that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> scene from a movie. Did he have to go down on a chick? You know, are you telling me the girls that signed up for James Franco's acting class weren't like, I hope he fucks me? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bro, it's always they were mad that they found coach. out he fucked all of them. Mm. That's what happened. I had an acting coach got his ass. Fuck you, no. <laughs> <laughs> bro. Actors Connection. He tells this girl not to brag. Actors Connect. This girl shows up in a skirt, and he tells her, put your leg up on the desk. Do it now. And she's like, I'm in a skirt. He goes, do it. Dude, long story short, he gets us all drunk, takes a cab with these two girls. Next thing you know, he shows up, misses two classes. He's in crutches. Two girls aren't coming to the class ever again. They, You know, he's fucking leg broke. You know, he ended up fucking the girl asleep, you know, guaranteed. It came out. You know, the girl, I hit her up on Facebook. She's like, yeah. I woke up at some apartment in the East Village, and I told my boyfriend, and, you know, he came to the acting school. It's like, yep, man, you can't be. 
I thought he broke his leg fucking the two girls. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what a story. <laughs> oh, dude. You know, so I missed they got, out on the acting class. They got their dude to beat the shit out of him. I That's guess the great. dude was this, you know, Dominican dude, real crazy fucking dude. You know, you don't, those Dominican dudes, they hate when you fuck their girl. That's one thing, yep. you know. Yep. Anyways, dude showed up, man, on some, you know, some Washington Heights shit. Mm-hmm. Beat the dude's ass. What kind of leg. what kind of acting teacher was it? Was it like a nerd, like dude, like geek? Um, yeah, well, yeah, real like geek. thespian. He yeah, real geek, touching people, real handsy. Oh, oh. you know, Wait, give you a did, massage coming up. Why from the did back? you tell the girl be like, put your leg on the desk? Put your leg on the desk. Ugh. And what scene are we doing that's that important? We're doing some monologue to Pulp Fiction. Yeah. It's like, that bitch never put her leg on the desk. Dude got, dude got fucked up for it, though. And you missed out on your acting class. Two acting classes. They had some substitute. This girl was terrible. She didn't tell nobody to put their leg on the desk. Nobody ever beat her ass. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if Tom was like, I took an acting class, and uh, I didn't know there was uh, a scene in Godfather when Michael gets fucked in the ass. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> News to me. <laughs> we studied a bunch for this. Yeah. I took an improv class and I wish I had been raped instead. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a better use of my time. Dude, I took a sketch writing class at UCB and they had a, they had like a late policy. If you're like past a certain point, you know, you're, that. you're not allowed in. And uh, it was like the yeah, last but you're day. very punctual. Yeah, well, you know, you know where this story's going. Uh, <laughs> they wouldn't let me in the room, and I threatened to fight the teacher. And I was oh. banging on the door, <laughs> and I was asking for help from other people. Being like, back me up. This fucked up, right? It's fucked up. That's why you'll only be a fucking UCB teacher, you fucking <laughs> pussy. It's like, oh my and god. And the teacher was like, "Excuse me, Ian. I have to teach this class, then sweep up popcorn for free." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, last UCB thing I've been to was this Friday night. Dude, they had bed bugs in the theater. You remember when they went to 42nd Street, that theater? Oh, Were shit, there that's that? I right. I don't remember that location. Yeah, oh. they moved to this huge auditorium and then went out of business. <laughs> yeah. I well, remember... there was that other thing, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that big thing. Whoa. What, like, that UCB thing, I mean... Scientology and UCB are probably not that far apart. <laughs> oh yeah, as far as indoctrinating people. Well, Scientology is way more successful. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, I, sp- I spent so much. It is kind of nut, and I'm not saying she's a bad person. I've never met her. That Amy Poehler has skated by, being a UCB founder, mm-hmm. and then being Dave Becky's client throughout the Louis shit. Oh, when Didn't Dave Becky was the one. Dave Becky fucking was the EP on Parks and Rec. Right. Oh. That Louie was on. Yeah. Because him and Amy Poehler are the same manager. Dave Becky was the one that, like, really did the shit with the Louie. Like, he was the one calling the girls, supposedly. Or or at least giving the orders. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But he was Louie's manager. And the story was Louie's manager was telling people to shut the fuck up about this Louie thing. Wow. I thought uh, you meant giving the orders. Like, listen. Oh, go okay, jerk off in front Louis. of these two open yeah. <laughs> yeah, listen, my buddy wants to jerk yeah. his dick around. Yeah. Can you just hang out in a room, <laughs> yeah. please? Hey, you two, you, you two, you're not going anywhere. Want a story for life? Yeah. <laughs> open up for Louie. No jokes about cocaine, and he's going to jerk off. <laughs> well, I, I, to your point, that is wild because UCB scammed so many people. They got me. And did they? Yeah. You got caught? How many classes did you do? Three of them, nothing out of it, gained nothing at all. Yeah. <laughs> Watched a bunch of YouTube sketches. <laughs> That's all they, they do when I did it. Yeah. I don't know. Did you take the improv classes? No, I did three sketch classes, and we literally watched. They go right on YouTube, and boom, you're watching yeah. a sketch class. Well, it's like some of these teachers, you're like, wait, why am I paying money to be taught by a Nobody. A yeah. dog you know? walker. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to, I don't mean to be pretentious. Ian and I both went to the same college. Where I went, in order to teach in the film program, you had to still be an active filmmaker. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, right. You had to have a project or something. Like, if you weren't working, you didn't work there. Mm-hmm. So that when you meet these UCB teachers who were yeah. like, you know, eating cereal for dinner. Yeah, living right. with forty other dudes. Meanwhile, Zero credits. Meanwhile, twelve people in the class are paying like five hundred bucks for a four week class. You're like, where's all that money going? <laughs> and they were on the Tonight Show. It's like, oh, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, who should I be listening Dude, to? Dude, that's the thing. It's like <laughs> those the UCB three really fucking. 
pulled the wool over a lot of eyes. And then because a couple people went through and went in movies and like SNL, everyone's like, that'll happen to me. Mm, yeah. And then it was funny because when it was all falling, all these bitter motherfuckers were like, I bled for them and all I got was this and I deserve It's like, no, you paid into a Ponzi scheme. What the fuck do you expect? Yeah, because it was your job then. They were creating more UCB teachers. Yeah. They weren't creating successful comedians. No. It was all it was a pyramid scheme. So yeah. After all this downfall is still around or I don't or, think so. I don't think so. The no. UCB East is something else. The main thing no, I mean it's a as a concept, but I don't think they oh. do anything anymore. Dude, it was I mean, dude, early two thousands, UCB was the fucking shit. Yeah, everybody dude. went to go see improv. Oh, oh my god. god. It's it's how I realized improv stinks. because uh, <laughs> people always go like, dude, you gotta see this improv. But they don't realize eighty percent of improv shows never get funny. Right. Yeah. They just do the bits. It's it's like it it's like they so much improv that everyone was exposed to was basically like uh the open mic version of stand up. Yeah. Or or more or less huh. when you see improv um record like on TV and shit. Yeah. That's essentially a best of yeah. mm -hmm. of bits that they've been doing for a long time that they are going back to the well mm -hmm. to recreate. Listen, guys, this is a sponsor near and dear to my heart. Because why? Because my asshole is a nightmare. And that's why we have our new friends at Tushy. Listen, you guys know how bidets work. They spray water up and around your asshole. Let me keep this really simple. If you got shit on your hand or your arm, would you feel clean if you just wiped it off with a piece of toilet paper? No, you would want to get in there with water. And with over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of people are changing the way they poop with our good friends at Tushy with a 30-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Stop wiping and start washing your butt. Go to hellotushy.com today forward slash guys and use our promo code guys for 10% off your first order. I have a tushy set up at the house and it has changed my life. Sometimes I'm not even shitting. I just want to spray water up my ass to feel a little better. As an older man, sometimes I'm walking around. I got a little swamp ass going on. You know what? Hello, tushy. So one more time, guys, that's hello, tushy. H e l l o t u s h y dot com slash guys g u i s for ten percent off today. Your asshole, thank you, and so will whoever's eating it. Tushy, dude, I I took an improv class, <laughs> and the funniest fucking thing I'd ever seen was the suggestion was chopsticks, <laughs> and this kid started the scene with. Welcome, may I help you? Oh my god! And dude, right when he goes, <laughs> "May I help?" the teacher goes, "Stop, stop, right. stop!" No, no. He was like, well, "I was working at a Chinese restaurant." Like the kid didn't see that what he was doing was the most insane fucking <laughs> yeah. thing ever, dude. The second chopsticks was suggested, you saw the mechanism, <laughs> and the kid goes, "Welcome!" And dude, I was the only one cackling. Everyone else in the room was like, "Dude, we had to take a break," and I'm sitting there like, "Ah." Take a break. <laughs> Dude, I am dying like an idiot. Just a fucking laughing hyena from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And everyone else is like, oh my God. I'm like, that's the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I got frustrated trying to take improv because I would try to make a joke. And they would always be like, this isn't about jokes. You're being funny. Yeah. This is about the scene. Yeah. And they're like, you're not in the scene because you're thinking about your next joke. And I'm like, oh, somebody's seen how I podcast. <laughs> 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 well, I... I always liked doing improv with with stand ups. Like, there were some shows where you do stand ups, then afterwards, all the comics would, and I always thought that was fun because it was dissolve devolve into like madness, and right. I like that. You know, when you sign up to a class at UCB, like Dom, do you have to like perform at the end, or is it like comedy dude, class? If you, or? Not UCB, dude. You gotta fucking be blowing the fucking producer. You ain't getting up on that stage. Oh, so I just... don't know how it was when you went there. But I couldn't get any stage time at UCB at all. Like, they would say, hey, we'll have people play your sketch. But, you know, you didn't pay us enough, <laughs> I guess. Because they used to do the Friday night liquid courage at, like, midnight. That's right. Yeah, but yeah. then other people would play your sketch. They're like, bro, I want some stage time. I want to get up. I it was essentially indentured servitude because you would pay to be there and perform. But then 
you also worked there right. for free. Yeah. So people were like same way. sweeping up. People were yeah, like, and, and a lot of them the door, were yeah. fucking power hungry at UCB yeah. East. Some of them were Dude. fucking dickheads. The pit's the same way. I worked for these classes right, at the, the fucking pit, pit. Washing dishes, taking out trash, you know. And I hit them up recently after the pandemic because the pandemic hit. I didn't do the classes. They're like, oh, that was the old system. I don't know much about that. It's like, no, motherfucker. I worked for you for free for six months. But then it's like, what am I going to do? Go take some shitty improv class with a fucking, some about chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let's all do an improv. Alex, give us a suggestion. <laughs> Danny Masterson. <laughs> oh no, you waping me! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, do you want like a stupid one? Like there would sure. be. Sure. Okay. You guys are in astronauts in space. Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Home Improvement, <laughs> and uh, the suggestion is astronauts in space. <laughs> Whose cum is on my forehead? <laughs> This is all made up by the U.S. government. Oh, no, we let Zach out of the spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. Yeah, 500 apiece. <laughs> that was fun. That was good. Good you know, Ant, doing drugs in Amsterdam doesn't sound fun to me. Why? I don't know. It seems like going to Disney to fucking buy the Mickey hat. It's, it's gay. What? I don't know. It doesn't seem fun to me. I don't want to. Where else would you want to buy a Mickey hat than the Mecca? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be around amateur. It's like going out to drink on New Year's, <laughs> uh... or like going to the gay pride parade. I don't want to go to the amateur things. I'm here for the fucking real deal shit. Mm. You know, it's like, it would be like going out to drink on St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. It's like oh, all the assholes come here. It's like going to fucking Mc McSwirlies or what. Mc McSorley's. McSorley's on yeah, St. Patrick's yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah, It's going to be an asshole factory. Yeah. Right? And I feel like I'm going to get off the plane in Amsterdam with an American passport and it'd be like, hi, I'm a douchebag. Yeah. I say embrace it. I, you know? I'll tell you what, dude. I just came back from Glasgow and Belfast and they are professional drug addicts over there. They are going to have, dude, ketamine, like we smoke cigarettes out here. That's just what it Should is. Did you do ketamine? I didn't, dude. I try to keep it clean, bro. I, you know. I'll smoke a cigar, I'll drink a whiskey, that's it anymore. I'm easing up. Mm. But yeah, I didn't know what it was at first, to be honest. I didn't know that shit's meth. Did you know? Horse tranquilizer. The ketamine what does ketamine knows? do to you? The ketamine is uh, it's a nice wobbly-bobbly feeling. <laughs> mm. I, I, I've been known to, to dabble every... Uh, Every every blue moon, probably only a couple times in my life, but it's nice. You're gonna really? be offered it a lot out in Glasgow and Belfast for sure. I just Dude, came a, back. A buddy, a buddy of mine has a DMT pen. Yes, Jesus, <laughs> that's insane. That's too much of a commitment for me. What the right. fuck? I, you're gonna go on the subway and fucking oh, yeah. puff it and be like, "Let me experience death." While I get on the A train, Holy shit. how I many hate... hits you get out of that? Hold right? on, hold on. <laughs> the the, doc, the, oh, the doctor has a comment. Here we go. I would like to defend the concept of the DMT pen. So oh boy. I've never done DMT, and I own one of these pens. But my reason for buying it is that, like, if I ever do want to try DMT, it's notoriously really annoying to smoke. You don't really smoke it, but you like vaporize it and you have to heat it to the perfect temperature. It doesn't work right. It's a pain in the ass. So having the pen, in theory, is just like if you want to do DMT, here it is like on a silver platter. Is so it you're, like a vape pen? Uh, kind of? Yeah. Yes. So like you, a cartridge. Yeah. So you're not okay. doing DMT like to go to the movies or go to the park. I wouldn't or think so. I mean, that's like a problem if you your child. Are, yeah. I don't think you would use it like you use a weed pen. That's what I was but thinking. If you were like, I'm sure some people do, but I don't I think that they still have a place outside of those. So people. you just have a DMT pen at your apartment like the gold Never been used. suitcase. I'm in actually Pulp Fiction. <laughs> at this like point, the way I don't know if I ever use it because I've had it for so long. Like I thought I wanted to do DMT at one point in my life. And then I was like, it seems like a little much. Yeah, to what, I was what happens when you do DMT? You go away for like five minutes. Yeah, like some but like then you come some back. people say that the room gets completely like black around you and you see you you can't even see what's in front of you. That's how much visuals are going it's on. It's like holding head. a gun in the house, you can't wait to use it. <laughs> 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 no, it's like having a gun in the house. I put it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> No, ketamine's great. It's like a wobbly bobbly, like it's a tranquilizer. Um, I would recommend it for landing gear. 
at the right. end of the night. Too okay. much coke, do some ketamine. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, what they or, say. Or, you know, one of this, one of the, a little Reese's peanut butter cup action. <laughs> Ooh. That's real. If you can maintain, that's a good one. Nice. Yeah. Dude, they're out there, man. I think the cool drugs probably go to Europe first. Then we get them when they're bored of the shit. Like, they're doing fucking fentanyl out there. On purpose, <laughs> you know we're out here like you don't think we're doing that here. Yeah, <laughs> we're fucking doing that here. Are you kidding me? But by mistake, I just you never stole your kid. grandmother's fentanyl <laughs> patch and sucked it out. <laughs> I'm trying to quit smoking. Someone gave me a, a fentanyl uh, test kit for weed. People putting that shit in weed now. Yeah, I believe it. Those edibles, bro. I had some edibles. I couldn't walk down the steps. Yeah. This shit's getting insane. Yeah, yeah I was so. Up. I, well, milligrams. I was in uh, Texas a few weeks ago, and I asked at the club if anybody had edibles. And someone was like, yeah, I have these Delta 9 edibles. And I was like, Pff. Right? <laughs> and I looked at it. They had Mr. T on them. So I'm like, I'll take them. <laughs> and they said one milligram each. I'm like, push off. <laughs> one <laughs> milligram. <laughs> Suck my dick. <laughs> and I'm with Paco. I took 15 of them. <gasps> Damn. They said one milligram, Dude. Ian. And it was fentanyl. So what happened? I take 40 milligrams to go to sleep. So I was like, I will take 15 of these one milligrams. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think they were tens. <laughs> because somebody got so high, they freaked the fuck out, uh, woke up 12 hours later to throw up because they were still too high, then had to go on stage that night still high. Oh, I was high shit. for 32 hours. God oh, my damn. God. In uh, what way were you high? What I was, was stoned off my fucking shit. shit like moving. I was praying to God, dude. I was so were high. You talking <laughs> to people or just keeping to yourself? I was keeping to myself, yeah. and then we went on stage, and I kind of shook it. Okay. But I was freaking out. In, in what way? What did it make you do? I was just super hot. Like, you know when you're high and you're paranoid and, like, you're like hey. It's like that Burt joke where you're like, do I breathe on my own or do I tell myself <laughs> to do that? And you're yeah. like, oh, I haven't been breathing. Yeah. yeah, it's like that kind of like you're like that like in your head. Oh, dude, that was the fucking worst. Like thinking, like building up this like reality in your head, and then it's like, oh, I haven't spoken in an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. and I'm thinking everybody knows all this stuff that I'm thinking, but it's like, no, this is just my inner thing. I need yeah, to as call as my father. This smoke break is brought to you by YoDelta.com, the official getting high sponsor of the Gas Digital Network. I think it's not weird enough to share a hotel room with me, poor Paco. Oh, God. Paco said on uh, the Friday night we were there, because I, I have night terrors, and Paco said, I woke up in the boat, and I'm a very like soft-spoken person, I think. I never yell. I never speak aggressively at people. And Paco said, in the middle of the night, I woke him up, and I went, I went, what the fuck did you just say? And he's like, what am I? You motherfucker! And I just started screaming at him. And then I apparently went, it's just chicken! And went back to sleep. <laughs> oh, my God. I got tagged in an Instagram video that night. The waiter gives me these edibles. I'm at the world prestigious comedy club that keeps changing their name. Which one? I think one's right that? now it's LOL Laughs New York Times Square. Or... Hilarious. <laughs> right? uh, hilarious. So, Stop somebody... keeping it keeping it strong. So, Holding yeah. up LOL. Tags me. This, in this... Uh, LOL, not the Yelp reviews from the last one, <laughs> New York. Yeah. Com. yeah, a different LOL. Yeah. And Dominic Leonelli's not on stage here tonight. Don't worry. <laughs> and dude, I'm on stage. I see a tag and I'm doing this on stage and i'm like i don't even remember there's no way this is weed dude like come on you think what you did was you know oh you were so high you're doing this on i don't stage. even remember doing it <laughs> i thought i did jokes about my mom I'm like, what the, fuck? <laughs> the fuck is this shit i'm staring at it like i have no clue doing this oh they were jokes about your mom are you sure you were going like this <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i drank a fifth of whiskey too but i oh, really yeah. think Jesus it was the Christ. edibles to be honest you know i don't know dude, I, to... I i recorded so, me and my ex, there's like this sleep thing that you can record when you sleep and it picks up yeah, like yeah. farts or snores or whatever. Yeah, and it gives you a report. Yeah, and it, and it was kind of hot because it would we'd set it and then we'd <clears throat> have sex and then we could you know play it later <laughs> and that was kind of kind of cool. But uh, we record. She She's record audio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She recorded me one time being like, uh, 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 "Who is that?" <laughs> <laughs> Did they get in for free? Fuck that. Uh -huh. And that was while they were fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Did they get in for free? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, is, he is having nightmares about door deals. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Where's the clicker yeah. at? Yeah, exactly. Ian needs so- <laughs> someone to go to sleep with him like Freddy Krueger with a clicker <laughs> to count how many people come into the show that he's not yeah. getting paid for in his dream. Who was the booker? It <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, looks sold out. <laughs> <laughs> what did you pay the room for? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it must be a football game in town. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Any I, fart fart action during the night? Oh, big time. Yeah? Always. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah, I feel you. Let's do this story and then I gotta hop out. Absolutely, buddy. Uh man jailed for raping mast intruder, another man in home. Is that not street justice? That's nineteen eighties Ohio. Is that <laughs> yeah? <laughs> So this happened in Australia. A Melbourne man who overpowered and raped an intruder will spend at least four years in prison. Kay Holland, 32 years old, faced the Supreme Court of Victoria on Wednesday when he was sentenced to eight years imprisonment. Um, This guy came in with a mask and a knife. Mm Mm-hmm. Got raped by the guy (laughs) who he was trying to rob. (laughs) And the... Guy who I would consider the original victim of the crime is going to serve the time. <laughs> yeah, but my question is: Is the how- first guy getting charged with burglary and shit too, though? Uh, no, he's already gotten his punishment. <laughs> Does it say how old the rapist was? Because that's very much thirty-two. Damn, yeah. was he's the got- rapist a woman or no? It was a- no. It was, it was a guy. guy. How do you? Okay, so the burglar was thirty-six year old, thirty-six years old, and was high on meth. Mm. Um. And he ended so you know up that getting, shit was tight. Uh-huh. <laughs> he ended up getting beaten with a baseball bat and was incapacitated on the floor when his victim raped him. Turned into Pulp Fiction downstairs. Oh my god! So the guy was the guy gay or was he just really all about justice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What Batman do you read? <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the number one demasculating. We all heard yeah. our grand. My grandfather threatened people. He'd be like, "I'll knock you out and smack my dick on your face." That's that old school. That's you know. That, was he from Ohio, the Midwest? That's Australia. Australia. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. We call that a Youngstown break-in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I disagree with this. I think once somebody's in your house, if he's allowed to shoot him, you're allowed to fuck him. Yeah, but here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, Alex said the guy was incapacitated, so he was just like lifeless on the ground. The guy's like, eh. I'll give one to you. <laughs> I'll yeah. give it a go. I don't know, but by that logic, aren't you like, well, now I'm preventing further break-ins? No, I mean, that technically isn't raping a sleeping person, breaking and entering. Puh. So, <laughs> you know, not only do Australians ruin comedy shows, they got to ruin robbery <laughs> did, 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 did uh the guy get arrested that night? The guy, I don't know. The guy? Because what I, if you let a couple days, I would be ashamed if I got raped. Like and why didn't alien. he get more time? I mean, come on, what the fuck? Isn't this the Me Too movie? <laughs> yeah. No, man, that guy should have got nothing. <laughs> Damn, get raped. I'm going to write a letter for this guy. I- <laughs> 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 Dude, I'm writing this guy a fucking letter. Yeah. You, Give me the point, judge. Uh, Give me fuck. the address. I'm writing a letter. That's While he's so in jail, good. the other guy should live in his house. Yeah. Ozzy, that sounds Ozzy, that Ozzy. sounds like the beginning of an eighty sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I got in a car accident with the butler. Now he has to be the butler in my house. Now we're in each other's lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's not I think if I think if somebody comes into your house you broke into the wrong house. Sorry, buddy. I, I mean I, he would have killed that, him. That's like that's like uh Bernie gets when he shot those kids for robbing them, and, and, then, like, and then he shot here. the one on he the goes, ground. He is another, and he and everyone's like, "No, no, too uh, much." You mean he became my hero? <laughs> <laughs> Tell that, me, there's that's not the thing. Times the guy's already on the ground. You beat yeah. the shit out of the guy, then you're gonna. It's like, what the fuck are you doing that for? The fun's in the struggle, <laughs> like South yeah. Central. He was stealing my car sounds. <laughs> Tell me, there's not days you're on the train <laughs> where you go, I get Bernie guts. Oh, dude. This fucking uh, guy with his dog. The dog's like barking on the train. I'm like, what the fuck are you thinking? Uh, you're bringing a Doberman on the train. He's just barking at people. Mm-hmm. And he had him in the little bag. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, because it's illegal to have a dog in a train. You gotta have a bag. A but bag. now people just have what? giant dogs in like Ikea bags. Yeah. Yeah, it was an Ikea bag. Yeah, that's how people Jesus. transport their giant dogs now. Oh, <laughs> <fuck>? God. <laughs> yeah. And and he was one. I mean, I'm no one to talk about tattoos, but he was one of those dudes with like, uh, I'm not even gonna say because I look like a coloring book. <laughs> he looked like, you know, like the stick and poke designs that are like little and yeah. stupid. You know, like me. Uh, so <laughs> before Ian goes, I want to watch one more thing, and then we're gonna wrap up and make it an early one. Yes. Uh, 
can you please go to Mike Rainey's Twitter? Oh and- my God. This is the greatest thing of all time. This made me laugh so fucking hard today. If people don't know, uh, I was Dadney crying. Is Mike Rainey and Tim Butterly, two of yes. the funniest fucking dudes in the world. Mike Rainey also does Little Stinkers, which is like a serial killer true crime podcast. And he has an amazing book out. You got to check it on out perks. called On Perks. It's One his of fault. the I legit got sober. <laughs> funny. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's fucking Mike Rainey's fault. How? I had him on my podcast. He kept talking about heart attacks, and I had one the same day after. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, yeah, my God. December 11th. <laughs> I, I had AFib. I went to emergency room having drinks so, since. <laughs> Dude, look at <laughs> that. Congratulations. Rainy, the goat. Shout well, out to anyway, Rainy. <laughs> uh, there's been that prisoner on the loose for like, what, two weeks? Yeah. Cal- Seda, Calvado, whatever. He, he shimmied his way out of a jail and he's been on the loose. But he's a tiny little fella. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they caught him and had the press conference today. And <sighs> Mike Rainey saw it was by his house. And showed up at the press conference. Yeah. And, and got a question in. Got a question yes. in. Oh and Alex, my God. the greatest yes. question <laughs> of all time. Yeah, if you just go on Mike Rainey's Twitter, he's posted it. There's I've a been few videos this of story. it. That's nuts. And uh, well, uh, Alex, you'll see it in a second. It's, it's a press conference. That's the guy who just escaped, right? Yeah, he was yeah. a little fella. And, and they he, caught him. He shimmied him up a hallway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a fucking ninja. Dude yeah. stole a van, a rifle, got shot at. Yeah. Yeah. So this was the question Mike got in. Dude. Well, Try it with Sam. So is there any concern that he would team up with another small man to step inside of a trench coat, little rascal style? <laughs> <laughs> and in the actual press conference, he gets it in, and oh you just see the, the policeman go, no, next question. <laughs> I'm following that dude right now. Oh, and the best, shout dude. out, Mike Green. The oh, yeah. fact that he showed up, walked in without credentials. <laughs> yes. I was crying, yeah. laughing, listening so many times, imagining him white knuckling the wheel, driving there like, oh, I got to make it in time. <laughs> Just with this locked and loaded in his head. <laughs> to to go through that effort for the bit is the it's the uh, such a goaded move. Single it's proof incredible. that he's one of the funniest human beings oh, alive. So Walks fucking funny. Walks around with a knife dude. in case a pit bull attacks him. Holy he's shit! He's great. Oh, the he's fucking the best. All right, we guys, let's wrap it up. Ian's got to yes. uh, head out to a movie premiere. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you to everybody at Gas Digital. Thank you to our wonderful guests, Dom and Freddie. And on behalf of myself and Ian Fidance, this is Zach Amico saying, "Bye, bye guys." guys.